Okay, perfect. Uh, my name is Lionel. I'm the co-founder of Techmakers Amsterdam. We are a startup community. Uh, we like to inspire, connect, and empower uh, our members through a series of events, but also like we, we are like very active on Slack, helping each other. Uh, usually, we love to meet in person, but for the time being, it's not possible. So we decided to, to shift our uh, events online and to keep inspiring and, and gathering insights from people from all over the world. So for us, actually, it's a great opportunity because maybe we would not have met you uh, in other circumstances. Okay. So today we will. Uh, I'm really happy to moderate the talk uh, with a great host, Olga. Uh, she will introduce herself like very quickly and we will discuss uh, the exploration of opportunities uh, with COVID-19. Okay, Olga, please, go ahead. Um, yeah, hello. Uh, super excited to be hosting this particular talk because I'm a big believer in um, predictive, you know, being predictive vs. proactive. And I think this is one of the very few times in history when we can actually build a strategy based on the data that we have instead of just like they did before what do you think our customers might like and then it's just assumptions and assumptions uh, i come from my, my background is really mixed so i have masters in, in linguistics and intercultural communication uh, an mba and also a master in business analytics and big data so i'm trying to combine you know all the knowledge to come up with the best with the best strategy and i think right now with the post-COVID situation, it's very important to, 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 to take the best from the both sides. So you do need to uh, come up with the solutions and, and, and base your um, conclusions on uh, proper data. And you need to, you do need to analyze the, uh, what we have already. But at the same time, you do need to remember that uh, there's also a human aspect in it. And right now, uh, one thing you need to keep in mind is that whenever you read an article or you hear a speaker saying, um, I would predict that this is what, what's going to happen next month, next year or whatever, most of the time it's just an opinion. And if you want to base your strategy, if you want to base your new business or whatever on someone's opinion about what's going to happen, you do need to dig in more into this and understand why uh, this person is predicting this and this. Because sometimes it's just a gut feeling and you also have a gut feeling and sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes it's the conclusion or it's a prediction based on a lot of data, but the data might be totally biased. Uh, the good thing about this crisis is that it's in no way a black swan. So things like this happened before which makes it easier for us to predict and to come up with the new solutions because it's not something extraordinary. Another good thing about it is that, let's be honest, it, it did not really change much. It only enforced uh, the, 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 the points, which the trends that we already saw coming. It's just that everyone's been a bit too comfortable, a bit too lazy, to, to, to do things. And now, all of a sudden, it's do this or get out of the business. So, uh, it, it's super important to, 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 to look at the trends, but it's also super important to understand that there's a human uh, component behind it. And people do not like the change. Uh, everyone's talking about the new, the new reality. Nobody wants a new reality. Everyone wants the old reality. So even though uh, there are trends saying that, well, this is going to be a totally different way, uh, maybe not, <laughs> or maybe not that fast. I love, I love the examples of, of, of one of my former teachers who, who whenever he talks about change, uh, yeah, we all say that change is great, you know, innovation is fantastic. And we all understand that we want the change. And then whenever we come to the supermarket and they've changed literally, the, 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 they've placed the bread into a different aisle and we're like, this is already the change we hate, you know, so imagine, you know, more disruptive stuff. Uh, so, so, so you do, you do need to understand that, that the uh, human nature will not change overnight. So definitely you need to take a look at uh, 
the, beha the, the, the behavioral change towards innovation and towards technology and technology um, adoption. But do keep in mind that it's not in the human nature to embrace the change. Uh, another thing that you have to keep in mind when you're thinking of the opportunity that this uh, crisis will bring, uh, people lie. So, uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the only one that knows the truth is Google search. The rest is just totally unreliable. Um, so uh, a lot of those assumptions about oh, uh, the, the opportunities or how the world is going to look after the crisis is based on what people say. And most of the time they lie. So if you check the hashtags, for example, on social media, it's funny, uh, you, can, you can like immediately guess the hashtags people will post, put on those kinds of posts. If you check, for example, when it's over, 100% of the posts are post-COVID because the whole world knows exactly what we mean by when it's over. And um, a lot of those forecasts are based on social media uh, and the tweets and the hashtags. And yes, a lot of people say, oh, when it's over, I'm going to go to, back to the gym. Yeah, the question is, how often did you go before? So uh, basing, focusing on only those posts on, on, on the social media, um, a lot of time it's wishful thinking. If people do tend to miss what they don't have, but once they can have access to it again, it loses the value. So don't be fooled by that, those promises of, oh, when it's over, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to invest in this, because maybe they won't. So, and, and, and also when you read about the forecasts, do you make sure you understand where the forecasts are coming from? Because sometimes they're coming from exactly this, analyzing tweets and the tweets say, I'll be doing this, this, and this. If they never did, they probably will not be doing this again. Um, another advice is don't focus on the quick fixes. Because if the solution is too obvious, Probably it's already being done by someone who had an extra, you know, spare million to invest. Uh, if you will have to start from scratch to build a solution, probably by the time you build it, another hundred companies will have it. Not to mention that the need will be gone because the Corona thing seemed to be super scary and disruptive in the beginning. And now it's almost getting back to normal. So, uh, if you want to build something basing on the fact that this is post-COVID, do make long-term plans. Because, um, and, and, and once again, this crisis is not that different from what we had before. So think of the trends we could see before and that are being reinforced by the crisis and focus on those. For example, we did see the trend of, of contactless pay which makes all the sense in the world. Now it's just being reinforced by the crisis. So you can take a look at that. But jumping into production of face masks, for example, might, I mean, unless you already have a business in sewing kitchen aprons, uh, yeah, then, then, then go for it. Otherwise, uh, don't try to ride the wave right now because the wave might be shorter than you think. And there are lots of people, lots of companies that are better equipped to do that. But do think of how this crisis reinforces the trends and also try to think two steps ahead and see what's happening and see what it might bring. Uh, for example, with the corona, uh, clearly a lot of people have to uh, give up their privacy. People have to, I mean, the governments are, 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 are reinforcing new systems and you'll have to share a lot of your private data. You'll have to the, the, the GPS uh, for the contactless uh, paying stuff. We'll have the cameras everywhere, um, the way we pay, the way we're going through all kinds of procedures, the safety, security. Until recently, a lot of people would reject certain marketing tools because they thought, well, for that, I need to give up my data. Now, at a certain point, it will be like, well, everyone has it anyway. And, and like it or not, people will be slowly, I mean, I think it, we're still a little bit in the denial phase, but a lot, at a certain point, people will have to accept the fact that um, 
we do need to you know lose a lot of our privacy uh, for the sake of security which means that emotionally people will be less uh, worried less anxious le less concerned about their private data because it's already been shared you know so they might actually accept another tool to optimize something for them because the, the, the privacy concern, the security concern will not be there anymore because there's no privacy anyway. Uh, so if you're building a marketing tool based on someone's um, actions, like before, um, you know, you log in, you use Wi-Fi locally, and then you get uh, immediately a pop-up ad uh, from the shop across the street because they know you're there. Some people will be a bit concerned before that, oh, damn it, so now, now someone knows I'm here um, and they would not, might not be willing to use the tools. Uh, right now, maybe this concern will be a bit less. So whatever, whatever you do with the marketing, with the, especially with the predictive analytics, with the predictive marketing, um, might be a good idea because, again, people will be less, less, less concerned about sharing uh, their private data. Um, we do see a shift in, in, in the shopping behavior, um, which means that the non-interesting shopping is, is going online, but shopping in brick and mortar stores is becoming experience. So if, if you are in architecture or design, you can already think of the solutions you can um, come up with for the physical stores to make sure that they... Uh, they are safe to shop at, but they're also fun to shop at because otherwise it's online. And, and uh, even though delivery uh, is, 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 is becoming a huge trend, what those people realize sometimes is that some people go to certain shops partly for the experience, you know, to, 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 to touch stuff, to taste stuff, to talk to the people. It's part of the experience. So think of how you can actually uh, improve that experience Again, if you have, if you have um, background. So that's one thing that if you're in design architecture, you can definitely focus on. Um, gaming, if you're by any chance in gaming, then, then you know, lucky you. Because gaming was already one, even gaming uh, was already a bigger trend than big data a year ago. So the people who really know what they're doing, they were already going into the gaming with VR, AR and stuff. So um, gaming and then um, edutainment, which is also uh, a big trend and which is the trend that, that was there already. And it's something really important to focus on because uh, with the technology, a lot of people will be not losing their jobs, but they will be redundant. They will not have to do their job anymore. They have a lot of free time in their hands. So creating, um, new solutions, um, education and entertainment for the people who finally have a lot of free time was already there a couple of years ago. Now what we saw these days is that a lot of people actually got stuck at home being bored and this is when it will be super cool to give them this, this option. But it wasn't there, it was Netflix and, 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 and Netflix, uh, likely for Netflix. So um, the, additional, the additional stuff for um, education entertainment is, is definitely a very good idea. Uh, now, in terms of education itself, we see a huge shift because the truth is that educational institutions, they don't provide education, they provide certification. And this is why uh, Coursera and all those platforms are becoming so popular because at the end of the day, uh, the money people pay for the education makes no sense. The margin is just ridiculously high. Uh, what the universities are seeing these days is that the people who initially signed up for those expensive MBAs and stuff, they're dropping out because they say, if it's not live, it is gonna be done online. I don't wanna pay this money. You know, this money doesn't make any sense for me right now. So uh, another thing you can think of is how you can not disrupt, but optimize the educational process. And what are the components of education that 
people uh, really value. Because let's be honest, again, if we all had the, 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 um, the self-control and the discipline to study online, we would all be professors by now. So there is a component missing in the online education at the moment, which still makes people pay dozens and dozens of thousands of euro to do it online, to have the teacher with a whip, is that what, what they're missing in, in online education? Or is that the team building, the, you know, meeting new people? Because that might be also the case. And right now, uh, the big trend in education is for the universities to team up with, uh, with the tech companies. So it becomes, let's say, hybrid education. But some of this stuff can definitely be done online. But the truth is that education is one of the most bonding experiences. And this is where you need to think of the of the human component of this as well. I because, like this, Olga, sorry, yeah. on that because uh, one of our members, the tech makers, uh, is um, Antela Quenta, the managing director of uh, Growth Tribe. And actually, they just released a new kind of online education experience with an app, some team building, so some recorded materials. So it's it's very interesting. It's really like uh, illustrate what you just mentioned about the need of education to to evolve, to go like to a new model, which is not just passive consumptions of uh, of information. Please go yeah. ahead. No, and, and and that's the thing. I mean, the the, the industries are not dead, but they, there's no way they're going to be functioning the way they were. It's like what we saw many years in publishing. Publishing is not dead, but uh, you can't, it's not going to be that easy anymore, you know? So you need to be constantly, if not disrupting, at least innovating, at least understanding, you know, how you can adjust to the, to the new reality, which is not that different from the old reality, but you still need to make an effort. Um, the good thing about the crisis is also that apparently, statistically, people are trying out the new brands. So if you want to launch something new, now is the time. Uh, this is definitely a fantastic time for the marketeers because for the first time in, I don't know how many years, we have the whole world has the common vector. So you can come up with very simple um, strategies, very simple campaigns, and a lot of people will understand because there are lots of things that not everyone can relate to. Um, and, and, and you don't need to adjust too much to different countries, to different um, target audiences, because you can say a couple of trigger words and everyone will understand immediately what the product is about and, and get the story. So you can do amazing, beautiful storytelling because now we're all kind of in the same reality. We're all going through the same process. So this could be actually a lot of fun, you know, for the marketeers to, 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 to play with this. Um, and right now, the, 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 big, the big temptation is to put things on hold, which is something that is not the right thing to do right now. You, you should actually invest more into marketing because when it's over, and it's almost over, it's just going to be slightly different. Uh, but you do, you do need to make sure that your strategy combines resilience and agility. So. Keep on, keep on doing, keep on working, keep on pushing, but do keep an eye on what's going on. And once again, if you, th if you, if you see people on Instagram launching um, online, uh, I don't know, uh, gym classes, it doesn't mean that anyone attends, uh, attends the classes. So don't be fooled by, by uh, certain noises and try to always think two steps ahead. So, I don't know, for example, uh, now uh, we're having a lot of deliveries, yeah? Might be a bit too late for you to go into the deliver business, but think two steps ahead. Think of, what, think of what those companies might need. So if it's more deliveries, they need more uh, bags to the deliveries, they need more packaging. Uh, maybe if you're in paper business, you can come up with some super cool packaging that maybe you might sell not to uh, delivery companies, but to the restaurants that are not used to actually even, you know, take away things. So think that if you cannot afford something super global, think of more targeted solutions that you can still uh, make money with because the, the market is big. But think two steps ahead. If 
I don't know if 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 um, most of the people will end up having COVID at a certain point. It means that most people will have will, will go through pneumonia and and lose uh, some of their uh, lung capacity. What can we do with this now? Uh, for example, the diving is going to be gone because uh, you can't really dive properly if your lungs are affected. Think of all the holiday destinations where diving is the only thing people do there. So if you're in travel, try to think a bit long term. If you're in sports, try to think a bit of long term and imagine all those resorts, all those diving clubs and stuff that will be uh, a certain point gone or lose half of the customers because this is this is a serious matter. Diving is not it's not snorkeling. So all the all the um, all the places, all the people there, all the infrastructure. All infrastructure, think of how you might use that. And, 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 and try to think of that because, I mean, there are some obvious solutions. There are some obvious things like, I don't know, um, telehealth, telemedicine. Yeah, naturally. But then again, if you are in, in uh, computer vision, definitely you can help the doctors. You know, you, uh, you, you, can, you can give them the tools that they can use during the telecom. But try to be more creative, try to think a couple of steps ahead of what you can actually come up with. Something not too global, huge, but some just a tiny tweak. And, and uh, yeah, start with that. Excellent. Thank you for all these great insights, Olga. Uh, if it's okay for you, we might start the Q&A now. Yeah, sure. Uh, so guys, please, I will try to have the gallery view. Yeah. Is there any question or comment or you want to share some insights with the rest of the group? Heiko? Oh, well, maybe uh, some inner interpretation uh, um, on, 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 on your, uh, on, on the, let's say the red line through your story is basically then um, not try to tap in on the current event, for example, producing face masks, but uh, extract from the current events, the uh, how people uh, basically start to behave in a different way and tap in on that. That that's that's more or less the red line in your uh, uh, talk, right? I I would say so because uh, in any crisis there are people who make money, but most of the time those are the people who have some free money and they can quickly, you know, spend it, invest it, and 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 do something. Unless you're in that situation, try to think more long term. Mm. Uh, excellent. I can underline it. Basically, one of uh, an acquaintance of mine, he had a small uh, printing factory in Thailand. He put it up and uh, it didn't really run well until he's now printing the face mask for print.com. So he was in place and he's just making... Uh, uh, yeah, let's say he's making better uh, money from his uh, from from the crisis than that he did before. Yeah, but I would maybe like if I might comment it, it's more like a pivot, and he already had some assets. So exactly, it start exactly. From scratch. So he has a process. Ready. He has the machines. Uh, yeah, and he's just scaling it up. Yeah, I mean, if you have mm -hmm. the capacity to do something quick, like you, but if you're not in that position. Uh, most probably by the time you come up with your printer. Um... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, would be, I would be curious to know who is working in what um, industry, in what field. So maybe you have actually some insights from there. Okay, from my left screen, Victoria. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm actually not working yet. I'm a student, but I'm about to graduate and I study international management. Okay. And what's your view on it? Uh, my view on... Or how do you experience the, the, this new reality? Um, yeah, it's crazy. I found, um, I found this uh, really interesting, like really insightful. But um, yeah, it's true that especially now with um, so much uncertainty, it makes looking for a job harder and um, everything is more unstable. So it's like... Everything is quite uncertain, um, so yes. <laughs> but um, we'll see. I mean, I haven't finished my studies yet, but I'm, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maria. 
You're calling from yeah. New York? No, I don't know. Where no, it's actually it's actually Moscow, but Moscow. I'm now located in Germany. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would have I would have to drop from the call because I have a call like at my work. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for the insights. Um, I I have met Olga maybe <laughs> seven years ago in Moscow or five years ago, and I saw that uh, yeah she would host this uh, webinar on LinkedIn and I decided to join as well. So now I'm currently working for a startup which was developed within DHL. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's an online platform and we, uh, we're helping companies to improve their supply chain network, uh, sorry, supply chain uh, risk management. So we're visualizing their supply networks and we show them where the incidents are happening. So besides the COVID, um, we also yeah, show anything what can disrupt their supply networks. Uh, now, for example, the hurricane season is coming after the COVID. So companies should always be aware uh, of um, like where, where the most trigger comes and how they can proactively react. Not by getting alert from the supplier, oh, oh my God, the, the tsunami or earthquake uh, just affected me, uh, I will not give you the products on time. But you can rather also try to predict. So not like Olga mentioned that you have a data that you can use for the prediction. This is a bit different, but you can at least, um, at least with the weather, you know, you can already sort of predict and try to mitigate uh, the risks on time. And at least not like um, when you cannot um, directly uh, have, an, uh, have uh, like a change or impact, at least you can uh, uh, make your clients aware that there might be some uh, delays and, you know, you can like keep up with the, the good name of your brand as well. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's what we're doing. But uh, besides that, I'm also always uh, interested in what are other startups out there doing. And uh, yeah, I think Amsterdam has uh, yeah lots of things to offer. I also have another friend there working in another. Uh, it's like a startup accelerator. So yeah, I hope when everything is over to visit Amsterdam, <laughs> to meet up with Olga and another friend. And, and with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and of course, of course, <laughs> it would be nice. Oh, you know so um, okay. maybe, maybe I would connect with all of you after the call, but unfortunately now I have to drop. Yeah, yeah but, we are we are very active on Slack, so I will share with all of you the the link. So if you want to join it, it's for free, and we help each other. We share insights. So. Great, but and and ho and hope yeah. and, and hopefully to meet you maybe this summer <laughs> in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Keep your fingers crossed. Thank you, Maria. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Hi Marco, you're calling from uh, Tallinn? No, I don't remember. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm from Tallinn, yes. Uh, so basically I also met Olga in some of the, I don't know, was it in Lithuania or Estonia? I don't remember. I think it was Tactile. Yeah, okay, like that. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so basically I have been doing different startups and, uh, and one of them, some of them have been in uh, insurance. And so basically we are just, we found out that uh, there is an opportunity not directly coming from the COVID, but um, but uh, the COVID kind of um, reminded us that um, there is like events um, cancellation insurance, which one is available only for the you know like the big two, uh, big players or very specifically defined um, risks. But basically, we are at the moment preparing one. Um, this is just just like an ad hoc project, which one started from some other kind of um, really, uh, like COVID relief uh, hackathon, but uh, it ended up like, it started in Austria, but it ended up in, 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 with the team of Estonians and, uh, and Austrians. So basically this is a, that the companies could, uh, that the crowd could uh, ensure their risks, but it's kind of like a betting. So basically, so somebody, so somebody would say that I would like to ensure that uh, in uh, November, there is no uh, COVID um, kind of distancing or events. And so some other people who would like to take the risk would say, okay, I'm going to bet you, like, I'm going to do like, I'm going to insure you for like 10 or 1,000 or 500 euros or 100 euros and so on. So basically we are building at the moment this platform to, to kind of do this crowd insurance, but it's not actually insurance, it's kind of crowd baking insurance or so you are kind of taking the risk either something, some event happens or not. So and this is like one of the side, side, side tracks that I'm involved in. Uh, but, but uh, for a couple of last two years, we have tried to do a crop insurance data aggregation. And we actually applied to different accelerators in the US, in Argentina, and, uh, but we are actually very happy that we didn't get accepted. Because you could imagine being in the US in, in March for, or an hour, and, and so we, it would have been quite a stressful moment there. So basically, but this is like just to aggregate the farming data 
and give it up to the insurers to make the underwriting and uh, claims management decisions. And, uh, and so I'm also doing some, um, I thought that it would be a good chance to sell like, um, uh, like a mobile app based uh, work task management and work task uh, like monitoring solution after the COVID started. But unfortunately, actually the companies, I had like a really good uh, negotiation with different companies, but the companies really, they all got blocked. So they stopped everything new. So they were just like very much engaged in, the, in, in, uh, in managing the crisis on that moment. So basically now I'm hoping that after the uh, effective measures will be toned down that uh, maybe they will get back. Because you know, basically it is just for the people working in a physical labor store, some like uh, cleaners, maintenance guys and so on. So basically using the mobile app, you could uh, give them work tasks and then follow when they fill out, where they fill out and how they fill out. So basically it would be a perfect solution for this uh, non-contact uh, environment, which one we are going to live now. So okay. these, are, uh, yeah. these are things which we have been actively doing now. Thank you. Olga, I have a question for you. Yep. Uh, and to, co uh, to comment like Marco's point, uh, I took part in the, and you too, I think, in the Dutch chapter of Hack the Crisis Hackathon. Okay. And in Amsterdam, there were in the Netherlands chapter, there were like 750 participants, which, which was just fantastic. The event was set in two weeks and we saw like people from all over the world willing to take part in it. So how do you see that, Olga, in terms of co-creation? Because we used to work like within companies. Some companies would open to like uh, consultants or hackers, but now... May I do believe that maybe it's going to also impact the way we all collaborate as a society. So how, what's your view on that? I think it's a great idea for short, for a sprint, definitely. Uh, it worked beautifully during the weekends. And then when you, when you follow up on this a week later, two weeks later, three weeks later, it's a totally different game. And I do believe that um, we do miss a bit of person to person, you know, contact. It's lovely to do this all online, but you, you eventually get, lose the feeling of the team. This is what I've been noticing with a lot of teams actually, that in the beginning, everyone's super excited, then the reality kicks in and it's not that easy in, anymore. I definitely believe that uh, the more international the team is, the better for something global. Uh, if you need to solve a local issue, it does make sense to so have mainly local participants because uh, like this is all great and rosy, but what I'm seeing right now, for example, is that the, my team, uh, in my team, um, very few people speak Dutch. So, and we're solving uh, a problem which is here. So uh, what we see is that at the end of the day, the people who are doing the marketing they can't even write the, the, the marketing text in Dutch because they don't speak Dutch. And this whole uh, idea of having international teams is lovely, but you also need to understand that sometimes the reality kicks in and having a bunch of expats working for the, for the Dutch market doesn't make sense because they don't understand the Dutch market. So again, it's got its pros and cons. It's super cool to have an international team. Sometimes a local team might do a better job. And being all um, working remotely is lovely. It's super flexible, gives you a lot of freedom. But sometimes what people miss is indeed, you know, the Friday drinks and, and hugs and just feeling the vibe, feeling each other's energy. So we, we're all humans after all. So yeah, te technology progress, lovely, but emotional intelligence is something that I think is going to become even more of a hot topic because the more technology we get, the more need for emotional intelligence we'll have. Definitely. Maybe we will, if you have a last question uh, to, to ask Olga, Eiko, Marco or Victoria, do you have any other questions? No? Okay. So I think it's time to, to close this talk. Uh, we hope you, you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Olga, for these great insights and perspectives about the future, but also like very hands-on. And there are some inter very interesting topics you address and that would require maybe like more longer talk around, especially the privacy aspect. Uh, it's, yeah, and the experience also, what you mentioned, like offline experience. What will we expect when we will go like to a retail store tomorrow compared to yesterday? 
So guys, uh, have a lovely day and hope to you to see you for uh, an upcoming event. Okay. Yes. Thanks have for joining. Lunch. Sorry, Marco. Have a good lunch. <laughs> you. Yes, you. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you.